Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 Ooh. order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing a limitation on the number of people that may gather in one location, this <clears> meeting <throat> conducted via remote participation. Specific information such as instructions and guidelines for remote by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.yarmouth.ma.us. For the public portion of this meeting, they, um, there will be no input, but you may view this um, on YouTube and on channel 18 after it is done. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. We're gonna start the evening with a roll call. Um, Nate. Yes, I'm here. Stephanie. Present. Jack. Present. Robert. Is, is. He was. Oh, okay. Uh, Sarah. <clears throat> Here. George. Here. And I am here as well. We have tonight Bob Lawton's with us and Ed Sentio is with us. Um, Bob, thanks for putting on a suit and tie for us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Always the, always the best dressed, you know? Mm -hmm. um, this came from work, so. Right, okay. <laughs> you, I'm sure you have PJs on below, that's okay. We don't, uh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna start the evening, uh, we're gonna do the budget transfers. I, I, we had them sent um, to us prior to the meeting, which is great. Um, and let's see, which one do we have? All right, <clears throat> the golf. so Ed, would you wanna speak to this or Bob or somebody? Probably Ed will. Okay, that's Give okay. A little info on this. Or, or Pat, would you like to do it since it's your, one of your groups? Sure, uh -huh. I'll be happy to do that. Is it going up on screen? Uh, that's one that you provided to them. <laughs> okay, so um, there is a, a transfer from the golf department, a request <clears throat> to take monies that were committed to the full-time salary line, understanding that we haven't had uh, two full-time positions um, active through the majority of this fiscal year and to take that 40,000 and somewhat and put it into the expense line as um, COVID has added some expenses that were not really COVID um, fundable through the special funds. Um, <clears throat> and so they would at the end of the year as they're trying to be tight with their budget, they would like to be able to transfer that over to continue with some of their expenses. I, I don't have the exact amount. If you do, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I did 50,000. And the monies are in there um, in working out the specifics for full time uh, through the end of the fiscal year um, that will not deplete that account uh, below what we anticipate needing to spend on um, the salaries that are there. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the committee from the committee? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just as maintenance supplies on it. So that isn't this for the uh, grinder? It was for the grinder. We've got some challenges with it at this point, but that's what it was. Um, in order to keep the blades of all the uh, mowers and the equipment uh, sharp, we have our own internal sharpener. It's called a grinder. It's a $42,000 piece of equipment. The one that we presently have is 26 years old. That piece of equipment <clears throat> passed um, for many years inspection, but this year when we went to uh, bring it up to speed, uh, people said that uh, the electronics and computer pieces within it uh, could not be replaced. They don't make them anymore, and it wasn't safe because it doesn't have the automatic shutoff anymore and a couple of pieces. So we went to look for a new piece, a new grinder, knowing that that one doesn't owe us anything. And we did find a grinder on the state bid list, um, and it is the price that you're finding there. Um, we would like to have um, been able to lease it before we buy it for one year because a lease would mean if there was anything wrong, particularly with this one, we could um, have the uh, company still own it and have them improve it before we buy it completely uh, out from the lease. But um, the bid, the uh, state does not allow us to lease under this um, FAC contract, we can only purchase. And they're now knowing that that's a restriction, changing it and moving on to one that we can lease, but we won't get it in time to sharpen our equipment and get things going. So. Um, 
that's why we've come to you and taken those salaries. It's about 43,000 and change. And I know that some other um, maintenance pieces and some things that they want to buy for that 7,000 is more, you know, strings for the weed whips and, and things like that, that they need to maintain the, the uh, course, not chemicals, not anything else. Those budgets are still in place. These are things that we've uh, worn down because they're expanding the size of the fairways to make golf easier. They have actually more square footage of um, turf to maintain. Okay. Stephanie, is that what you're looking for? Um, yeah, I mean, I, if, if what you have right now is broken and it's like an essential tool to be able to provide, you know, the core surface of a good green, I guess that makes sense. Um, I just, as, as we start to get into, um, the challenges of the, um, the upcoming year's budget um, and sort of where we can find money and everything. I just am feeling like maybe this, this sort of practice of transferring, you know, and, and keeping department uh, budgets, you know, kind of level and, you know, it's good. It's, it's it's good in in good fiscal times, but in, in tougher fiscal times, I feel like it might be something we might not necessarily want to be so automatic about. I mean, I don't think we we very rarely said no on anything, and we might want to start looking at it with a little bit, you know, closer magnifying glass. And this is an enterprise fund, and not so. This is a self fulfilling, self funding group with golf, just like in water. So. Uh, what they don't expend, of course, goes into reserves and there is some balance. Uh, so sorry, Robert's just telling me he's joined as we're talking. So um, it's uh, the money's there and, and their revenues were higher than anticipated for this year. And there is a, a reserve. And I know that there's an opportunity to maybe get back some of the uh, uh, money that has been put forward to support golf in their leaner years. But uh, that will st still be there and this won't affect that. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments, questions? Uh, I'm clearly in favor, but it's going to make it easier to play golf. <laughs> so, George, That's you know, they, opinion. they keep pushing those Bass River fairways back farther and farther. You must be having a better, quicker round. <laughs> well, let's just think, say things are staying as they always have been. <laughs> Would someone like to make a motion? I'll, I'll move it, George. I'll make a second. Okay, let's do a, a roll call vote. Nate? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jack? Yes. Robert? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. <clears throat> and I am a yes as well. Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes. If I might uh, add that we have a uh, a person who's not familiar with any of you, he actually doesn't even live in Yarmouth, who is doing the transcription of the minutes. And okay. so, if you could all put your names, uh, like Nate, if you could not be Sharon, but but be <laughs> here for her while taking notes and trying to figure out, especially because we don't have our pictures on a lot of you, she's having a hard time figuring out who's speaking. And just with the lit, lit box. I'll take the video off and I'll see if I can change. I don't know how there to. There it is. Good Nate, man. Darren's thing. <laughs> You're done, Nate. Don't worry Thank about you. it. Thank you. Thank okay. you. That's good. Um, actually, okay. though, at the last meeting, um, Ed like changed my life and blew my mind by showing that there's a feature on Zoom where you can have it do closed caption and then you can have it transcribe. Um, so then I like that would make the person who's doing the minutes job like. In infinitely faster and better. Um, so I don't know. Oh, there we go. Now they're showing up. Ask and you shall receive. It's amazing. It's just magic. So. Okay. Yeah, but see, it's all one great line and it doesn't say whose other voice is coming in, right? Right. But it certainly should be helpful with absolutely reviewing it. So yep. that's great. It, um, it, does, it does have the person, uh, but not in this transcription. So other services do it better, but this still helps. Agreed. Thank you. 
<clears throat> All right, moving on to um, item number three, which is a further discussion about alternative sources of funding for the DY Regional School District. Um, Ed is going to do a presentation again, similar to what we talked about last week, but adding some much needed further clarity to get us to understand exactly um, ways for us to fund this budget deficit for the schools. Um, so without further ado, Ed, if you would like to um, put up that document, I don't know if you're capable of doing that, if Pat yeah. needs to do that. I've already given Ed permission. He should be Great. all set. I can take care of it. And just one note um, about how we're looking longer term. Uh, in summary, if we, we can try to balance the budget with one-time sources like free cash, but that is frowned on by um, the S uh, by S and P, and what we want to do is try to make sure that our rating is still in great shape in terms of others looking at how we're managing the budget. So, putting in a large lump of money into from free cash to balance the budget just stands out like a sore sore thumb. Um, so, what we can do is do it more cleverly um, in some of the shifting of some of the expenses. And I just want to show you how, and then you guys can comment on, on uh, how we may end up doing that. And I'll let Stephanie go. And before you do that, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, when you say um, it's frowned upon by SMP to pull from, from those um, one-time sources like free cash, does that also apply to stabilization? Yeah, stabilization would be a huge red flag because if you start raiding your stabilization fund, then they really think you're in trouble. What is it we use our stabilization account for? To get a better bond rating, essentially. I know, but um, what do we do if, with the money? It, if we had, so let's say that um, our results at the end of last fiscal year were really bad. You know, we projected yeah, I'm sorry, uh, say the end of this fiscal year, we projected a 33% decrease in our local receipts as a worst case scenario. If we blew down to like 50% of local receipts, we may be forced to use stabilization because we would not have generated free cash that we're using to kind of plug the budget. So if we thought this was a one-time phenomenon and we wanted to uh, actually keep our staff on rather than laying off staff members, uh, because we knew this would bounce back immediately, then we might next go to stabilization, but we don't necessarily have to pull that trigger now. But that's, that's, they look at our fund balance. That's another thing that they look at. And if your fund balance decreases, then you're, uh, again, that's a hit on your bond rating. But, but I'm just asking, if you're not using the stabilization account for one-time expenses, what are you using it for? For... Yeah. It is a cushion for a disaster. And this is not considered a disaster? This is not or yet considered a disaster. It right. could turn into a disaster if it keeps on going, but um, we have wherewithal to deal with this without utilizing stabilization funds. And I think the uh, bond rating agency um, looks more favorably on that than it would um, if we made some moves that show that we're able to handle a downturn like this if you know other people can't as well as we can but at this point in time we can handle it but you know that's up to this board of selectmen and the fincom um as a, advises to the board of selectmen but uh if bond rating is a, a higher bond rating so that we can keep down our our interest expenses as a goal then um i would say that that's our last resort and we're not at the point where we have to use the last resort okay thank you ed Ed, did we use stabilization during the Great Recession? Do you do you know? I know yes, you weren't. We did. We did. Okay. We didn't. We didn't have the same types of levers, and then we had ten years of a great economy uh, where we could actually build up, you know, reserves, get capital within the levy, and do a whole bunch of stuff. That wasn't necessarily possible before the Great Recession. You know, again, dealing with the school issues. Um, you know, it's been a challenge for multiple decades but we just had 10 great years of uh, a great economy and robert i think you have your hand up i do um ed i think you're forgetting um 
We also use stabilization. We can borrow against ourselves. We can use that account to pay for fire trucks and things like that. So we don't have to pay interest to other entities. Yeah. Um, so a strong stabilization account, uh, you know what me, I'm, don't raid the accounts. It's the worst idea. Um, so that's another reason why we use that money, which is again, we, we can buy our own large capital products and then pay ourselves back like out of the fire department um, just a, ambulance revenues. Just a minor um, a point of clarification is the fact that we actually use free cash in that in the case of this was uh, several years ago to buy a fire department piece of equipment and what they did was they reimbursed uh the general fund out of the ambulance receipt and that money went to stabilization it didn't initially come from stabilization yeah but it did <laughs> increase our stabilization and this year we may do the same thing with um the uh, overlay reserves to help out with that fire department equipment as opposed to borrowing. But the mechanism to pay it back would go wherever the uh, town administration and board of selectmen indicate it could go to OPEB, it could go to stabilization, it could go to a lot of different sources depending on need. We set to move into um, you know, some ideas and then this is where we uh, discuss those ideas. Uh, we had we went through this briefly, uh, or we went through this last time, so I just wanna try to go through it again. And then what I did was uh, kind of scale down some of this is, um, and added some additional information. So I just wanna start off with, um, because we don't have capital within the levy anymore, that's the first bullet we fired to deal with um, the last you know, um, uh, crisis that we had but we're able to deal with it because we had a, a strong free cash balance. Uh, so in this particular case, we are um, utilizing free cash to deal with um, capital items. One of the modifications I made here uh, potentially, and this was echoed by the uh, um, school committee and actually Carol Woodbury, that perhaps they would pay for their uh, capital needs out of their two 0.7% uh, E&D, that would reduce the draw on capital. And the Capital Budget Committee did a great job uh, ranking their items from one to 18, leaning on um, things that were safety or school related as number one item or the top item. And then uh, what they did was instead of going over the amount of free cash that we uh, previously had, they're now well under the amount of free cash that we started with. We started with $3.3 million in free cash, uh, or actually about 5.4 million. We used about 2 million in November. And then uh, uh, we are looking at allocating 2.1 million uh, for capital at this point in time. So that's where we are with our free cash position. So again, rather than taking that $2 million and using that to balance the budget, which we definitely could do. Um, I'm suggesting that we reduce some of the items that people either want in the tax levy uh, and haven't been granted yet, or that we shift things that are in the capital levy that were newly added and shift those to free cash or other sources of funding. Um, so the first item is that the Board of Health wants to fund an additional person to uh, help with the um, rental, the uh, rental uh, inspection. Uh, they made a case to the Board of Selectmen last night um, for additional help for the health department, we could actually use COVID funding to actually fund that uh, additional help. We have also gotten um, a quote and COVID funding for setting up a 24 by seven hotline they indicated they had 904 complaints related to housing that would initially be handled by that hotline or website or phone app. And the hotline is either you know, phone or uh, done through a website. And they would triage that, talk to the, um, the owners of the property or the people that take care of the property, try to resolve it. And then only those items that they have to take care of would be handled by the Board of Health. So that would help them out 
with any additional workload they might have. This is a new item. Um, I forgot about this one, um, but we bought or we leased two electric vehicles, uh, two Nissan Leafs. Um, the charging stations were slow to get ready or get up to speed and um, COVID hit and some of the inspectional activities were slowed. Um, they cost, uh, if we were to buy them, they cost $11,699 or $669. And they have very low mileage. So that might be something that we might want to consider. And I would say that would be a free cash uh, type of ask. And then um, we uh, have a green communities designation. Uh, we weren't able to spend the money fast enough the last go round. Um, so we lost $200,000. This go round, we're going to be able to spend it. Uh, we've spent all the money. We're going to put in the final report thanks to Margaret Song at the Cape Light Compact. But her deal with the towns is ending on June 30th. So we may want to look at the potential of having a green communities coordinator so that we can get $200,000 of money from the state every year, as opposed to every other year or whatever the case might be. Again, a consideration. The police department have talked, has talked about getting uh, body cameras. I don't know if that's for next fiscal year or the following fiscal year. We're still trying to get some details, but uh, you know that might be a free cash ask type situation. And it may be that uh, it might fit within the two point uh, $1 million because the capital budget committee might um, indicate that that's a higher priority than maybe some of the other items. And, and potentially the police will also uh, indicate that some of the their capital asks are a lower priority than um, the uh, uh, body cameras. Uh, they've indicated that this is now their number one uh, priority for uh, the police department. So other things may be able to drop off. One of the things that was added uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, was putting in uh, money for interns and part-time staff in town administration. Um, this would be, these would be things in this case that would actually reduce the levy, would shift the money from the uh, town administration budget and shift it over to free cash. Likewise, you, you've seen, um, the information about increasing the IT budget significantly. Uh, I, you know, I think we can get away with just doing that out of free cash for one year and try to build that back with hopefully some good news we'll see in March and then again in, um, in June as it relates to our local receipt. Uh, likewise for building, we tried to build back OPEB that was taken away a last fiscal year to try to balance the budget last year. I think we're in a position where we're going to have to do that again this year. And these are all, except for uh, the town admin budget, these are all items that were increased in the levy this year. Um, so these are increases that we would put to free cash as opposed to uh, putting them in the levy. And the other salary accounts that you'll see uh, kind of are neutralized in town admin by this particular move. Uh, the trees, uh, they, uh, the uh, DPW wanted to add uh, $30,000 into the tree account, into the levy. Again, new ask for increasing the levy. Um, this is a, a matter of you know, discussion with you guys, but as you'll see in the reallocate article, can, can everybody see this? Is this too small or can you read this okay? Everybody good? We can see it. Okay, great. Uh, when we had the tornado and we funded the tornado recovery, we had, I think, $680,000. We spent all but $95,000. Um, what that, and you're going to see, or actually Pat already sent it to you for next week's consideration, is to actually utilize this money. And part of this was supposed to be for three uh, repairs as a, uh, or pre-maintenance as, as it related to the um, tornado. Um, you know, uh, notwithstanding Stephanie's point, um, we could potentially uh, allocate this to trees and that would essentially take care of trees for two years. 
In addition, when we look to lease uh, 50 Workshop Road, there's funding for trees that will be removed out of that location to put trees in other locations. So we'll have you know, two to three years worth of tree money uh, coming out of uh, these different sources if that's acceptable. Uh, sanitation budget, likewise, uh, tried to put OPEB uh, back into the levy uh, or into the sanitation budget, but that just doesn't seem to fit this year, but we need to fund OPEB to deal with, or you know, to show that we're making progress on an unfunded liability. Otherwise, uh, we'll have issues with uh, S&P. And they've already commented on our OPEB and our retirement um, issues, uh, 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 pre-funding issues. Uh, the health department, likewise, uh, the uh, human services money was taken out of uh, the budget last year to try to balance the budget last year. Uh, that money really should be uh, paid out of CARES Act as opposed to the human services budget. Um, and that was not a situation where we always had this money in the health department's budget. This is a four or five year phenomenon. We, in previous years, if we wanted to do something like this, that would have come out of free cash. It's, it's recently become a fixture, but it wasn't previously. And then we did articles to fund the health, and, uh, health department. Um, those articles could remain, or we could close those out and generate more free cash and uh, use COVID money for that. And we've got a time limit to use that COVID money, and that's uh, 12 31 uh, 2021. So if we don't use it, it goes back to the state. Again, uh, OPEB in the health department budget, looking at switching that out of the health department budget and, put, and paying for that out of free cash. We have debt that we're going to have to pay for, for the Route 28 borrowing, and we may have a police HVAC borrowing that we have to do. And I'm proposing that we pay for that out of free cash. This doesn't necessarily even have to be a reoccurring expense because we've all talked about short-term rentals. Those are going to go into the wastewater enterprise fund. We could use that money to actually pay off the debt service moving forward uh, for the Route 28 roadway project, which is related directly to wastewater. Obviously, the HVAC system is not. Um, again, for debate or for the discussion is the potential of eliminating the FinCom Reserve, you haven't used the FinCom Reserve this year. I don't believe you used any of it last year. This is just a way to balance the budget. And uh, one of the good things that Bob Lawton, one of the many good things that Bob Lawton did was he was way ahead of the state by about 20 or 30 years, allowing us to reallocate appropriations to meet budget challenges within the fiscal year, whereas uh, the prior legislation allowed you to do it you know, the last couple of months of the fiscal year. So that could be a substitute for the $100,000. And depending on uh, what that money would be used for, perhaps it's COVID related, perhaps it could be based on local stimulus money or the reallocation of articles or the use of other funds, or as actually Bob Lawton and uh, Stephanie uh, noted, uh, utilizing CDBG funds. So there are other ways that we can deal with uh, what might have been used, uh, regularly used uh, um, with the funds from the FinCom Reserve. So these preliminary ideas result in $624,000 of reductions in the tax ability. And I didn't point out the header, which uh, if we include the schools, we're at $1.5 million uh, over the levy. Uh, and without an override, we couldn't fund that. So these are moves to get that to um, $905,000 above the levy. And as uh, people have noted, and uh, certain people have had private conversations, um, if they want to speak to that, that uh, I think we're confident that the school will bring down their numbers somewhat. We don't know how much at this point in time. Are, are there any questions about uh, some of these maneuvers to try to, try to um, keep our bond rating in good shape, use the free cash as the second set of bullets that we're gonna fire to deal with this uh, crisis situation uh, to lower our levy. And then um, 
you know, kind of work on that as we progress into next in, into the following years. Yes. Um, so I think this is all really Ed, um, some very uh, thoughtful accounting, and um, I really appreciate you taking this fine tooth comb, especially finding, you know, things that we can pay for with CARES Act money and and the free cash. Um, I I did take note of what you said about. Um, could you just go back? Yeah. So line forty seven there, the short term rental, um, the short term debt for Route twenty eight. Um, you mentioned that we could use the short term rental money to pay for the debt on that, but you're not proposing doing that at this time. You're just proposing yeah. to pay for it out of the free cash. Yeah. We. We have no short-term money that's in any bucket at this point in time that's usable for anything but potentially to balance the budget. So once this goes into the wastewater enterprise fund, hopefully this fall, then for next, the next time we have to pay for this debt service, it would come out of that fund as opposed to coming out of the general fund, which means that that would not be a reoccurring expense to the general fund. But you're talking about it as it relates to just the Route 28, not the HVAC system. That's correct. Only that one portion, about okay. half of this. Okay. I just wouldn't feel comfortable voting anything today that had to do with the financing of, of the wastewater stuff, but that you're, you're not suggesting that. I'm, I'm proposing that for next fiscal year, not for this fiscal year. Okay. All right. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Um, so again, that, that generates 624000 of shifting money to different buckets. Um, that gives us a target now of $905,000 to help close the budget gap. Um, I also want to uh, note that our free cash starts at $3.3 million. So far, we've used $2.6 million, $2.7 million. That results in $650,000 of unused free cash. Unused free cash would then move into the next fiscal year to be, after certified, to be allocated as is appropriate. Okay, so we still have uh, somewhat of a reserve going into the next fiscal year. I'm sorry, Ed, what, did you, what did you say that the first part of the free cash was gonna be used for? So the first part of the free cash is everything above this line. So it would be the capital uh, asks as sort of, or as recommended by the uh, capital budget committee, given that we hope that the schools will pay for their, their portion of the cap, or they would pay for the capital out of the 2.7 million of E&D. Again, one-time expenses for one, you know, one-time uh, revenue for one-time expenses. Although I don't consider E&D really to be one-time because this is just money that the towns have paid over and above what we should have for their assessment. Mm -hmm. Then you add together all of these different moves that might utilize free cash if you wanted to do the electric car, and you're not voting on that now. If you wanted to do the green communities person, if, you <laughs> wanted to, if we wanted to use this bucket to try to uh, deal with the body cameras, and we could even deal with the body cameras, again, by bringing forth to you some existing articles and re, uh, repurposing them either at town meeting or prior to town meeting. So there are other ways to satisfy this as well. Um, and then adding up all of these items, that all totals the $2,667,000 of the use of free cash. And then we have a balance of 3.3 million. That preserves $650,000 of free cash. Okay. And Ed, that's free cash that we already have in the bank, not free cash that we are projecting we'll have at the end of this fiscal year, correct? Yeah, in, I, I don't want to say that it's um, already in the bank. You still have to recertify free cash. So for example, if people don't turn in or request their grant reimbursements, that's a negative to free cash. So, you know, if we got $10 million in grants and then you know, we spent it all and then, you know, we didn't get any reimbursements, you know, that would be a $10 million hit to free cash. I don't anticipate that. 
we're on the departments to do their um, get their reimbursements, but those are some of the items that could affect free cash. So, but I pretty much believe that for the most part, all of this plus what I'll detail later will be moving to free cash when we get into next year to be conservative. So I'll just ask Bob Lawton um, with the transition, um, you know, it's, it's easy, you know, for, for things to get dropped and whatnot. Can you just, you know, reassure us that, that um, someone will be on top of uh, department heads to make sure that um, those, those grants and whatnot uh, get reimbursed for? Yes, I'm going to be with Bob right now for at least a month, if not a little more. And then when we, when we hire a new assistant, that person will probably take that responsibility along with Ed. I want to let you know what we do every right. week. We produce that active fund balance report, which you've seen several times. In red are the items, highlighted in red are the items that are negative from a, from a grant standpoint, from a grant cash balance standpoint. So the departments see it every week. We see it every week. And we really get on the departments, you know, towards the end of the fiscal year. Um, you know, we get on them, you know, throughout the year to deal with that. So, you know, um, we all take it on as a responsibility because this is a key item for uh, free cash. And, you know, departments do a good job. They're just a little late sometimes and we just reinforce it over and over and over again. Okay, thank you. And then I wanna go down to, okay. Hey uh, Ed, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ed. We're, we're having trouble with the recording hearing you. Could you? Somehow pick up your volume a little bit more, please. Okay, is, is this better? Yes, thank you, Ed. Okay, I just I just put the microphone closer to me. Uh, so, if the school doesn't come down, and we presume they will, uh, we have nine hundred and five thousand dollars of money or a gap that we have to fill if we didn't want to go to a, an override or if we didn't want to use stabilization or other types of things. So now we get to the potential of using short-term rental money as a uh, four-month bridge to get to the November situation where we would use this amount of free cash and the rest of the free cash as the basis for funding whatever we might use from an accounting standpoint to show the DOR and S&P that we have a balanced budget. So you'll see that the unused free cash is 650. If everything was funded out of free cash above this line, then we would have roughly $5,000 more to find somewhere in other free cash to take care of the money that we might, from an accounting standpoint, indicate that we're using to balance the budget. Other ideas that would reduce this, I mean, this is how we get to 655, is uh, it was mentioned that perhaps, again, golf had a great year last year, they're having a great year this year, they're at 137% one, of their previous year's revenues, and their previous year's revenues were tremendous. So they should be generating uh, additional reserves. What they have right now is $523,000 in reserves. That number should go up. The general fund provided to them to keep them afloat when they had issues, $480,000. We're asking for a modest $200,000. And we can't say to the DOR that they're paying back a loan, but we can say that we are charging them back for the services such as accounting and payroll and HR, uh, IT, that are allocated to them from the general fund that they don't currently pay for. And we could easily go up to $200,000. If it's 150, then you know whatever we pull out of short-term rentals would be increased. Again. We'll pay this, I mean, this money that is related to the short-term rentals will go into the wastewater fund. It'll just be the first set of dollars that come out of free cash if the Board of Selectmen agree to the policy draft and outline 
that um, I think uh, Bob, will we have that? Will we discuss that when Bob, Bob Rittenauer is on board? The um, outline for how to do the pre-funding and the funding for wastewater. Most likely, yes, yeah, because that'll be that's like a week. So yeah, <laughs> I think we so can we, wait a week. And we have a draft. We have a draft yep. policy. Uh, the RAC has seen that draft draft policy. You guys have seen that draft policy now, which says that um, uh, we will be using the amount that was generated from the short-term rentals, and that will be moved into the wastewater enterprise fund. That's a policy designation that the Board of Selectmen will make if they choose to. And there is no other policy that says the wastewater or the short-term rental fund will go anywhere. So that would be the first policy, first written policy that will designate where that money goes. So we have the golf chargebacks. We could do other things like doing the same type of chargeback calculations for the uh, economic development group, the CPA group, uh, community development uh, block grants, uh, affordable housing trust, whatever other people decide is appropriate to perhaps generate other money. We can go through other funding sources. So like, for example, the planning board or the uh, community development wants to do some things for their visioning. And they, I think they indicated they might want about $40,000. They've got $40,000 in a planning fund. So rather than using free cash or tax levy, we should have them use that fund. And there are other examples of where people can use money that's already in their purview to take care of their issues as opposed to trying to come up with uh, other general fund money uh, to make those things uh, work for them. And then we could uh, reappropriate articles to actually um, uh, close whatever gaps we want to close. And unless there are questions, I want to go over a, a rough estimate of what I think free cash might look like on a conservative basis. Any questions here, or would you like to go on to that next exhibit? Ed, I have a question for you. Yes. How much, how much money is laying out there that has been appropriated, let's say in the past two or three years that hasn't been used? Can we bring that back in to pay down this debt? Uh, what debt? Well, this 900,000, this 900,000 that you're looking at at the bottom. What, what you could do is you could potentially shift more. Again, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at the S&P rating. So if we put in and say, and when you do the tax recap, uh, if you put in, hey, we're gonna balance the budget with $500,000 of free cash, that might stand out like a sore thumb. So I'm just saying that what we can do is do this in different ways. But yes, when I go to the next tab, I'll show you how much money is, is unspent at this point in time in those articles. Thank you. Any other questions for this? Just to, sh just to give you a comfort level about potentially as an accounting entry, utilizing the short-term rental as a local receipt. Ed, can I make a comment, please? Yeah, sure. So I, I've spoken with Ed um, a couple times over this, and I know the question. I know the question from last week, and the concern was, you know, kind of quote unquote, we don't want to use wastewater money to fund our budget. And I know this is what Ed's saying, and I think it's just really important to understand that this is truly an accounting maneuver to satisfy the needs of s &P. It's, we're gonna fund wastewater with the money. We're not taking it permanently. It's just a way for us to maneuver around on an accounting basis. It happens quite often um, to, to pay this deficit that we have this year. Um, and I just think that that's very important. And I know that's probably circling in everyone's mind right now that they don't wanna utilize wastewater money. And that's really not what we're doing. It's an accountant practice, an accounting practice and a maneuver to satisfy the S&P rating agency. Thank you. I also want to make a note that the short-term rental money is going into local receipts now. It is not going into a wastewater fund because we haven't established one yet. We'll establish that fund in November. 
So this is not going into, a, I, I hope in November, uh, if we put it on the town meeting uh, warrant, uh, we can uh, establish a wastewater enterprise fund. And then we could shift this money over to the wastewater enterprise fund. And if we had established a wastewater enterprise fund last year, and we had short-term rental money, which we didn't have um, at that point, and we tried to pull it out, yeah, we'd be pulling out a wastewater enterprise money, but we're not doing that because there, there is no short-term rental money from last year to take from. So I just wanna you know, emphasize that point. I'm not taking money out of a wastewater fund. There is no wastewater fund. Stephanie? Yeah, I just wanna also say, I've, I've also spoken with Ed and, and um, gotten a little bit more clarity about what he's proposing to do. And I think I was the one who was probably the most um, uncomfortable with um, using the short-term rental funds. But, you know, as, as what I, you know, from what I understand, it's, it's taking what we already have in free cash, taking what we are pretty sure that we're going to have in free cash um, and just putting that into that enterprise fund. So it's just an accounting thing. So I feel more comfortable with it now, um, but my caveats are, I, you know, there's never guarantees when it comes to, you know, those free cash. And I, I appreciate you making those points, Ed. Um, the the uh, projected free cash. So I think we should try to find, you know, at, find funds wherever we can and kind of you know spread that around. So I like the idea of, you know, what the the chargebacks and finding other funds and finding reappropriating from current articles. And then my other kind of caveat is my main concern with doing this is just the, the precedent that it sets in terms of um, it becomes very easy, um, you know, I think for folks to say, well, if the amount that was originally sort of budgeted for phase one of wastewater, um, you know, turns out to be significantly less than what we're bringing in in short-term rental money. Why don't we bifurcate that? We'll use, the, you know, the rest of it to pay for OPEB or, um, you know, cruisers or what have you. And I think um, I would just feel much more comfortable if it was very clear and there was, you know, clear support, um, you know, amongst the, the selectmen and the finance committee to just really make sure that no we're we're putting all of it towards wastewater because we know phase one is only one aspect of how much it's going to cost and this is a bear for the taxpayers and um you know <laughs> as much as we can reduce that burden for them um by using visitor dollars i think that as a general principle we should be okay <clears throat> to try to give you some security again we don't have any policy for how to put that money anywhere at this point in time for short-term rentals, but we hope to put one in place. So once that's in place, that's a policy of the Board of Selectmen and it would be more difficult for that money to be used for another purpose. Um, yeah, and I'm just saying, even if this committee were to say, okay, you know, we're okay with this, this one time, but you know, it is our hope that this enterprise fund uh, will get developed in um, the fall or something like that. Um, you know, it would be somewhere written somewhere down. It would make me feel a little bit more comfortable. So that's in the policy draft that I gave you guys. That outlines um, the fact that short-term rental money will go to the wastewater enterprise. Yeah, I just don't know that this committee's ever weighed in on it. Okay, yeah, I emailed it um, prior to the last meeting. I can send it again if you like. I'm saying I don't think that this committee has weighed in on that. Ed. No, but so I can send it again and you could maybe put this in as a um, as an agenda item for next week. That yes, would be helpful. I can send it again, Ed. All right, thanks. So um, we have the unspent free cash that we talked about from the prior tab. Uh, right now, what we did last fiscal year was based on a worst case scenario, 
we budgeted local receipts at 67% or a 33% reduction um, versus uh, what we had received in pre-COVID 2019. We are currently at 84% of our, if you look at January, because I think because the motor vehicle excise tax is an anomaly for the February timeframe, um, we're at 84%. That could go even higher. If it does, then this, then the amount that would be generated uh, towards free cash from local receipts would be $1.8 million or greater. If everything just fell off the cliff for the last three months, we would still be I believe above 67%. So I believe we're gonna have a strong contribution from local receipts. Then if you drop down, the short-term rental, as I indicated, has not been used for anything. All we're doing is saying, when we do the tax recap, and I'm probably being more open and being more transparent than I needed to be. <laughs> Bob's probably laughing at me. We could have done this and not even talked to you about it. So I just wanted to say that, you know, the short-term rental money, given that the assumption above the two, up to uh, the uh, uh, sections are row three and row five hold, we're going to have $1.2 million of short-term rental that's going to contribute to free cash. Then we reduce the state aid assumptions by 20%. That results in this, and the state has said that they're not gonna reduce the state aid. We didn't know that when we set our tax rate. So we, and when we set our budget, so we were conservative in that regard as well. Since we're gonna get 100% of the state aid as per the state, and we've already gotten you know, three quarters of it, we should generate $300,000 in free cash from that source. Um, the, and Nate, to, the, to your point, we have $2.5 million in unencumbered, so nobody has done a purchase order or contract against the money of articles that were passed in previous years. Even though um, we, we, out of the $5.8 million, we got $3.2 million that's encumbered. A lot of those don't have contracts. They don't really have commitments. They just put in placeholders to encumber those funds. But we could, in a worst case scenario, I'm not advocating this as step one, but we could get another $500,000. And then um, if we switch more money from the general fund to COVID, we can generate more money. Um, if we use grant funds instead of general fund dollars, to the extent we keep on trying to push departments, that could generate more free cash. Um, if we uh, we're to use other available funding sources. You know, that's more free cash. Um, and if, for example, the departments don't spend all the way up to their appropriations, and that I don't, I've never seen where the town has spent 100% of its, its expense budget. Uh, Bob may have, but I haven't. So that will generate free cash. So just on these sources alone, not even taking into consideration that we may not, um, that we may also get expense money. I just wanna take the easy ones. That could result in $4.4 .4 million in free cash if we use, if we reallocated these articles, if we take that out, it's 3.9 uh, million. And let's say, you know, any of these don't come in as expected, um, it will go down, but we're still gonna be probably over $3 million in free cash, way more than enough to put 1 million or 1.2 million, whatever it might be of short-term rental money into the wastewater enterprise fund without decimating our salary budget. Any questions that people feel more comfortable? And again, there is no wastewater fund that we're taking money out of. Anybody have any questions for Ed? 
Okay, hearing none. Ed, great presentation. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I think that concludes our discussion on alternative sources of funding, um, which leads us to um, the notion of looking at department budgets um, and thinking about some sort of votes. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking, and I've talked to Stephanie about this, as well as Ed um, and Bob. I think you're going to potentially, hopefully, weigh in on this as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm in favor of the presentation that Ed has done in, in the way we would fund that deficit. So I think we have an opportunity here to vote on the budgets as they stand, which most are somewhat level funded or, or are level funded, excluding a couple. I believe we could vote on them in one vote in one motion, as long as we made amendments to that motion to allow for the specific items that Ed just outlined of paying certain things through free cash, um, using free cash um, that eventually will go to wastewater to offset the money that we need. Um, so as long as we have those amendments, I think we could do it all in one in one vote. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. What I did, uh, I, I believe you can do it without amendment uh, because what I did was I took these assumptions uh, in, within Munis, we can have different levels of budgeting. So I created, and I can display um, what I'm talking about, uh, hopefully, because I'm going to try to share two screens. Can you see both documents on your screen now? One yeah. says, and this might be hard to read a little bit, but I'm trying to put both budgets side by side. The one on the left is budget level one. The one on the right is budget level two. So. And what I'm doing is giving you the summary. So I think we can even go through each budget very quickly uh, with motions and votes. Uh, so the budget on the right actually has those budgets with the amendments made to utilize free cash or other funding sources. Um, so you could actually vote these actual numbers and vote based on uh, this particular summary budget if you choose to. So if we made that, that's that's great. So if we and that's what I'm looking for. So if we did that, but then your ideas didn't make it the final cut and didn't get approved, where does that stand for the finance committee? So uh, uh, approved by um, the board of selectmen or approved by you all? By the board of selectmen. Well, you know, then we're going to modify the budget again. Your vote still stands. If they want to modify something, those items would just come back to you. Okay, so if we vote on the, the right side and then you present this to the board and they say no, then we're kind of back to ground zero and we got to start all over again to figure out what to do. I don't know if they would blanketly say no. They might say no to certain pieces of it. Um, but, um, you know, I think just the pieces that would come back to you. And I also want to let you know that you could, because you have both sets of budgets, you could even say, well, you know what, Ed, I like the idea of certain of these, but I'm going to vote level one's budget, you know, combined with some items from level two if you wanted to. Hopefully you'll accept all of level two, but, um, you know, you can go in, in, the, in the way that you like. Okay. I, I just didn't want to get stuck where we vote for one thing and it doesn't, the reason why we voted for that doesn't come to fruition. Pat, you're raising your hand. Yes, please. Only if this is going to be an, uh, I am off, uh, an official vote. I, I had one question on Ed's presentation. Ed, uh, you had a line in the um, reductions for uh, a borrowing for roads, water, and wastewater. And then after conversation, I think it was $128,000. And after conversation with Stephanie, you said it wouldn't be for wastewater. It would probably, which leaves <clears throat> roads and water. Water is an enterprise fund that was going to be funded, and then and then um, all of the roadway funds are in capital. So I don't understand what that borrowing is. Yeah, I can explain that to you. Um, so in the um, last uh, uh, annual town meeting in June, there was 5.4 million dollars voted 
to mm -hmm. do design and engineering on Route 28 so that we could coincide our efforts in laying uh, wastewater pipe and water pipe with uh, the state as they repave and widen Route 28. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the wastewater related funding that I was talking about. All right, I, so I'm sorry. We, we are going to do a short term borrowing mm -hmm. to get the money to do the design and engineering work. And we need to pay for that short term borrowing out of either free cash or out of our tax levy. I'm proposing that we pay it out of free cash. Okay, thanks. Because I knew that the other line for the normal um, road levies, 1.2 or whatever, was already in the free cash ask. Yes, they are getting a lot of roadway money. So I, I believe as it stands now, uh, we can go over these um, line items um, one at a time. Um, we could, someone could make a motion um, so that we could take a vote. Um, I would ask the committee their thoughts. I would be fine making that motion of taking it in one fell swoop, but do we need to have any kind of just general discussion first? I don't see anything wrong with having a discussion. Well, you can make the motion and then have your discussion and then have your vote. Sorry, I'm trying to control my cat who is trying to go after some shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Bob, can you help me word the, um, the motion? And you've, you've done it in, uh, I guess you're, you're talking about budget level two, right? Yep. I'm talking about, and, and I'll make this bigger so that if, if we don't yeah. care about mm -hmm. trucks deposing against budget level one, yeah. I'll try mm -hmm. to make this bigger. Can you see it all now? Better? Better. Okay. I guess the motion would be to accept the, uh, that the finance committee would recommend the FY, I think this is right, FY22 line in budget level number two as presented by the finance director. So moved. Second. <laughs> well, that, that, that would seem to cover all of the budgets within budget level number two. Well, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any discussion? Sense. Hearing none, I'm going to take a, a vote roll call, please. Uh, Nate? I'm for it. Stephanie? Aye. Jack? Aye. Robert? Is Robert still here? Robert had to leave. Okay. Um, where did I leave off? Sarah? Aye. George? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Great. That went swimmingly. Um, we're on agenda item five, which is um, approval of minutes dating back to what seems like an eternity ago, January 6th. Um, I can't even remember two weeks ago, never mind three months ago. So, anybody have any comments? Um, I started to look at them. Um, There were there were some sentences that were just not quite. I don't know. Um, I wondered if we could get them in Word. And I could make some suggestions for there. I, just, I don't know if anyone else has any caught anything, but I thought they were. I mean, like putting aside any semantics issues, I thought they were pretty accurate from what I remembered. But the problem is like, what were we talking about in January when we've had this many meetings between then and now? That was more of my concern. So obviously going forward, we'll get a little bit closer to the minutes, to the actual meeting. Um, we can, we can postpone if there's no one willing to, to make a motion to accept. 
which w there is at least three sets that were sent out, Brian, and I don't have them in front of me. Does any, does Pat or Bob, do either of you have the dates? Do you have the dates? I don't, I don't have the minutes in front of me. Okay. Yeah. I think I we're had, talking about the January 6th. This is January. January. This That's is January 6th. Okay. And, and to be honest, I didn't read them from the transcriber and to make any corrections, but if that's what you're finding, Stephanie, I'd be happy to take a look at the 6th again and the 13th that I sent you today and try to do a little grammatical work on them so that and get them back for your uh, discussion next meeting if, if that's what you'd like. Let's do that. Thank you. Yeah, there's just a couple verbs missing. That's yeah. all. Gotcha. We don't use verbs in Western Mass. It's one of those things. If it makes you feel any better, Mr. Chairman, that I did, uh, I presented to the Board of Selectmen minutes that I found, executive session minutes from 2018 last night. So, did anybody remember those minutes? Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, but they were all approved. Great. We like that. Oh. And released, by the way. Yeah. This oh, is why I was confused. Clean that Pat, up. you sent us meeting minutes from like November and December a little bit ago, too, didn't you? Yeah. And I thought we found that they were in there, but I'll look again to see what's been posted and what hasn't had a vote yet. Uh, she started earlier and then I um, found that, that some had been posted. So let's, I'll look through the okay. website and get specific on what's there and what's needed. Okay, right. that makes sense. Maybe the, the agenda lists the six. So Pat, okay. you can talk afterwards and figure out how many we can get on there and then go from there. And okay. if it's possible to just send them all in one email. Once I get them done, I want to have enough time for you to read them, but I'll do as best I can to get them to you. <clears throat> so we're postponing that. That's fine. Um, new business. The only thing that I have, um, and pardon me jumping on my phone, but it's in an email and I need to find it. Um, and I'm sure Bob and Pat know more about it than I do. It's the town cleanup day. Robert had sent to me um, that you know, we've in the past, the committee has done some work. I mean, obviously this time is different. Um, I feel like I say that quite often. Um, so it's more of a clean up your own area type of thing. We still want to, we can register as a group. You can register individually and I can't find the email. Um, but we used, to, we used to come to the town hall and get our bags and our things to pick stuff up and then go and do our, our, cleaning and then meet back at the town hall and there'd be a cookout. Well, that's not happening. It's more of a do it yourself. Um, you need to provide your own bags and gloves and all that stuff. Um, personally, myself, I would love to do it, but I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be available. It is the 20, I believe it is the 17th of April. April, that's correct. So. I don't think I can attend, or not that you're attending anything, but I don't think I can participate. But I think it, Pat, it's probably on the website, I would imagine. I'll find the email and send it to everybody if you want to um, participate. It was a great event a couple of years ago. Um, I took my kids and my wife, and everyone had a surprisingly a good time doing it. So, um, and there's a lot of trash if you partake in the past. I'll, uh, there's a nice flyer that was produced and uh, through the chamber and uh, as, as a partner in it, and I'll get that flyer and send it all to the uh, the members uh, tomorrow. Great. It's a, it was a great event. I mean, it really, the stuff that came off the streets was surprising and, and scary. Yeah, I, I remember the one woman that decided to do the exit eight on and off ramp and had like 14 bags of every Dunkin' Donuts cup and things that you can find, because that's a nasty area. So it does have a significant impact, especially just before the season starts of cleaning up some public areas that we usually get to. The amount of dips were astounding. Oh, <laughs> always. Um, that is all I have for new business and it is 7.13. Hey, chairman? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I probably should have uh, <clears throat> made this note earlier. Your vote is still good, but I think um, Bob and I probably need to deal with the Golf Enterprise Committee and the Golf Department and all that related to the chargebacks. So I didn't make that in the budget. Um, and then we're, you voted on the school budget 
in debt levels as they are today, but obviously we'll be getting new numbers and, um, and I didn't put the 1.38 in there either. So once we get those school numbers, then uh, you would need to uh, probably revote those. Okay, that's yes. fine. And I'm gonna email to you um, what you just voted on uh, in terms of the uh, summary budget right now. Okay. To all members or just to the chair? I send it to all members and I just did. And me? Yes. Thank you. And I'll send you uh, later today the um, uh, outline for the wastewater enterprise funding and pre-funding policy. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. And we'll put that on the agenda for next week to have a discussion. Um, Stephanie. Stephanie. So, Bob, I know that we have just thinking about the um, town meeting warrant articles. Um, I know that we have the, whenever they get finished, um, you know, being kind of warded and everything, we'll get them. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had the time frame right of um, when we have to vote on them for, for the printing and how much time we'll have then from there to be able to discuss. I'm trying to figure out what the, that time frame is and how many meetings we have to have. It'll be in April. I'm trying to get everything done. The formal hearing is May 4th for you guys, but my hope is that all those votes are done. Um, Mary Alice in, in our office said that she should be able to finish the warrant with town council approval by the end of next week. And then they will all go to you for, for uh, review. But when that's you vote before printing? It'd be before printing. Right, but when when is print? Do we know when printing will be? Uh, no, be the, and the only reason is that um, the uh, printer has been a little um, lax in, in getting back to us on specific dates. We will be fine because we'll have it done, probably the, the printing will probably be done the first week in April, uh, first week in uh, May. So I'm looking at this month coming up as finishing that. All right, and so we have time. We should be we should be fine on that. So um, essentially, we have the seventh, the fourteenth, the twenty first, conceivably the twenty eighth. Yes, probably. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've just never been through this before. By anybody on those, because we can arrange those if there need to be any. Could you say that again? Presentations by the proponents of the articles. I would assume we, you may want some people in. We normally would, of course, absolutely. Okay. But we'll that's going have a lot of time. Do, we, we do you have an idea of how many of those articles there are going to be, the, the ones that we normally have people in for? Well, you probably have all of your CPA articles. Uh -huh. That's like one presentation. So that shouldn't be that long. And then there, you've already kind of talked about the, um, the enterprise funds, the water, the golf, and the subject mm, I think I meant like, sorry, the petitioned I'm, ones, like oh, those. Um, uh, <laughs> so we have them in sometimes if there's like a budget impact or monetary impact. That's saying six, six of them. Six. Yeah, there are Pat, six. You're muted. The presentation, the presentation to the um, selectmen, I believe, is going to be the twentieth of April. Let me look. Yes, that's the 20th. So those will all be done before that and hopefully to you. Um, the, the issue on the petition articles is town council is reviewing those now. I just want to make sure that, that he's done, that I don't have to make any changes after he, uh, he reviews them. And, uh, but those people, like even though you might think, not think uh, we have the um, plastic bottle issues and those, they do have an economic impact, so you may want to talk with them, I, I would believe. Um, a lot of those, sorry, Bob, a lot of those petitioned articles were withdrawn, so from right. at least one, if not two, yes. town meeting cycles now. Yes. So were a lot of those just coming back in the same form they were before? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 
The only other one, there will be an article, I well, I'm gonna recommend, because I just don't know what's gonna happen, a, um, an override for the school. I'd rather have it on there since the board has to vote early in April to put article, uh, put ballot questions on. Um, I don't wanna get caught short where something happens and we run into a very uh, serious financial problem. I'd rather have it there and not, and not do it and recommend against it than not have it and then have to call special elections, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, one of the school committee members came to, to the town hall and asked if that language could be placed on the article for the DY budget and a question on the ballot. So we said, sure, that's easy. <laughs> Voting is I, hard. But. Yeah, there is a, a petition article to um, transition um, into electric vehicles for most of the cars, most of the vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. So that would have an impact. There's also a solarized um, Yarmouth, uh, a petition article again, um, one that wants to put um, zero net zero uh, restrictions on all, all new capital projects by the town, which might add additional costs to a lot of our construction. Uh, so definitely, I think almost, if not all, the articles will have some kind of financial impact. If not today, then down in, in the future as we move on to these new initiatives for clean energy. I'm having trouble getting a copy of all of them. Um, I know the Solid Waste Advisory Committee was looking at specifically for the plastic water bottle. And I think there was also a second one for um, styrofoam containers that was pushing around, but I haven't seen if that's one of the six, Bob, I don't know. I've only well, seen a couple. Mary has, Mary Maslowski has, has them all. They're all in town council's hand and probably she's not releasing them because she wants to know what the final wording is. Yeah, okay. So, so what? The town clerk gets them to us and she knows I'm looking, I will get them to yep. you as well. So we'll wait for it, that's fine. Yeah, I made a note to get that to you. I got it, Bob. Should we start scheduling petitioners? Yeah, you can. Well, as soon as we find out who they are. If we can put them on notice, you're gonna meet on Wednesdays? Yes. So I can just ask them what Wednesdays, Wednesdays are good. But we, we can do that between Pat and myself and just start going, you know. They're not going away, they're all, they're, all the signatures have been uh, approved. So I think that's a good idea, Stephanie, start to line them up. Yeah, so whichever ones are on there, just get them, Pat, you can just line them up and Bob and put them on our agenda, that's fine. We, the order doesn't matter. Well, so tell Mary Alice so that you, when you work the uh, budget out with her, she'll know which ones to add and we'll get a, a balance of how long it'll take. I know there was, um, one from last year that was to put solar panels in the historic district and the old Kings Highways district was really pushing mm -hmm. back against that. Um, and so they withdrew that and they said if they were going to bring it forward again, they were going to repetition it and get new signatures because it was going to change. I haven't seen that. So no. Okay. So with that timing, would we be meeting next week? Uh, good question. Um, Possibly not, I would imagine. So mm. next week is what? The uh, 31st. <laughs> Did I do that again, Bob? 30 or 31st? I think it's the 31st, right? 31st. Yeah. Let's take on this calendar, huh? <laughs> we, we had a long discussion about what they want. Yeah. Um, uh, they had a, you wouldn't we have any, a you a meeting have any petitioned, petitioned articles at that point. You've done the budget. Um, the school probably won't be finished with any adjustments to their budget. So you, you, you may take a week off and then start in earnest and, we'll, and schedule things for starting on April 7th. Does anybody object to taking a week off next week? Sarah, no. opinion? I'm in favor because I'm, uh, you know, I, I, you're all being warned. I'm coming back to Massachusetts on the 31st, so. Oh. No, I'm no, never uh, against a week off, you know that. <laughs> mm. So I, unless something comes up, I would imagine we would not have yeah. a meeting next week, which is fantastic news for everybody, I'm sure. Yeah. It is now 7.23. Does anybody want to, uh, I don't think there's any further questions. 
<laughs> I'd move. We adjourn. Thank I'll you. second it. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Nate? I agree. Yes. Stephanie? Aye. Jack? Aye. Robert? Not here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I, it's, he's on my list. Sarah? Aye. George? Aye. And I'm an I as well. It's a wrap, folks.